Yo guys, what is going on? JPS back for another video. And today we're going to be covering an incredibly important and interesting topic. This one's going to be about alcohol culture in Germany and how that differs from the United States. As many of you know, we are plagued by an incredibly unrealistic drinking age of 21. I don't know someone under the age of 21 and over the age of 18 who hasn't had a sip of alcohol. We actually had the drinking age at 18, but you guys know how the United States is. We have a lot of states, and we value states' rights over the centralized government. Some states wanted to have you know, certain laws around alcohol. Other states didn't, so people were driving across borders to get alcohol in other states where it was legal and just created a mess. So Reagan just made it all 21. Every state is 21 to start legally drinking. But... From a few videos we've reacted to on Germany, I've noticed that there is a substantial difference in the alcohol culture and that the regulations on alcohol and alcohol consumption are a lot less restrictive in Germany. So we're going to be learning about that more extensively today, and I'm super excited. I really don't know much at all about the German drinking laws or drinking culture. I know about Oktoberfest. I've heard of it, but I don't know what it is really. Um... So yeah, let's hit the like button, hit subscribe, guys, and let's get right into this. Hanging out with your friends in the park on a warm summer night, drinking a few beers, listening to music, or having a champagne toast at your high school graduation? Normal in one country, taboo in the other one. Yeah. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia, I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I have been living in Cincinnati, Ohio, off and on since 2016. When you mention Germany to anyone in the world, one of the first cliches that comes to mind is beer. I even have mentioned German beer a few times in my videos. I'm planning on selling my own beer mug. I even created my Patreon tiers based on beer sizes. So I guess I'm totally confirming the stereotype with this. Not every German is like that, of course. A lot of my German friends, especially girlfriends, prefer wine or mixed drinks like Hugo or Aperol Spritz, which, by the way, don't really exist in the US. But either way, alcohol is an important part of the German culture and our alcohol culture is pretty different than what you'll see here in the US in a lot of aspects. How so? That's what I'll tell you in this video. I'll be talking about the drinking age, the laws, how alcohol is perceived in the two countries, how much alcohol is consumed, the German beer culture, and in the end I'll share a few fun facts about the actual act of drinking alcohol in the two countries. And a quick disclaimer before I start, we'll have I'm to watch not that trying October to encourage fest. anyone to drink alcohol with this video. It can be addictive and if you drink, please drink responsibly. So the first thing to mention is the drinking age, of course. For Americans, it's usually shocking to find out about the drinking age in Germany, and for Germans, the American drinking age often seems pretty shocking too. In Germany, you're allowed to legally buy and drink beer and wine, which includes sparkling wine, at the age of 16, and hard liquor at the age of 18, while in the US, the legal drinking age for all alcohol is 21. So obviously, some Americans 16? <laughs> I thought, it, honestly, I, like, my guess was that it was going to be, like, 18. 16? And then the hard liquor at 18. What is hard? Is that over 10%, I guess? <laughs> Americans think that the drinking age is way too low in Germany, and some of us Germans think that 21 is ridiculously high, yeah. especially since you can drive, join the military, and even buy a gun way before that. Sometimes Americans talk about how they visited Germany and saw even kids drink alcohol. That's because at the age of 14, you're allowed to drink beer and wine when you're with your parents or a legal guardian. A lot of the states here actually have exceptions like that too. And from my personal experience and my social environment, I'd say that it's pretty normal that parents let their kids try some beer or wine when they're young. And once they're like in their teenager years, it's not uncommon that parents know and allow their kids to drink alcohol even when they're not quite 16 yet. 
A 16th birthday Damn. party in Germany is, in a lot of cases, very different from the typical sweet 16 party <laughs> in the US. It's yeah. usually more like... This is, this is exactly how... Oh. <laughs> this is exactly how it is in the US. Oh, you're 16. Germany. <laughs> Look at this bottle. Like the equivalent to an American's 21st birthday. And because of the low drinking age, Can't people wait for also that. start going out earlier in Germany. At 16, you can officially drink at all the beer festivals. And my friends and I also went to bars and certain clubs a lot at that age. Whenever the place had a dance floor though, so kind of like a club setting, they would keep your ID at the door if you were under 18 and give you a stamp or wristband or something. And with that, you weren't allowed to buy any hard liquor and you also weren't allowed to stay past midnight like everyone else. You would have to leave and pick up your ID at the entrance. And if you tried to stay longer, they would take the leftover IDs and go look for you in the club to kick you out. Damn. Fun times. By the way, there is no legal closing time for clubs and bars in Germany. They can usually stay open for as long as they want. Sometimes there are local laws in cities because of the noise, but overall it's normal to stay out until the morning in Germany. In some extreme cases, like in the party scene in Berlin, people even stay until like 11 a.m. or something the next day, but I'd say most people stay at a club until like five, six or seven a.m. <laughs> In the U.S. is 2. In the U.S. is 2 a.m. In the U.S., most <coughs> states have regulations on when the last call is and how long bars can stay open. Here in Ohio, 2 a.m. is the last call, so after that, bars can't sell any alcohol. Bro, I just can't believe that. Five, I mean, 5 or 6 being the norm? I mean, please. That would be amazing. That would be so fun. Imagine staying out all night and then staying until the morning and then staying the rest of the day and then staying until the... <laughs> no. See, then it would get like, okay, let me go home. Someone give me water, please. <laughs> but some bars are allowed to still serve the purchased alcohol until 2.30 a.m. So that's when everything closes. Which in Germany, that's when some people start to go out and not go home. But more on these laws in a second. Another big thing related to the drinking age are fake IDs. They're pretty common in the US, while they're not really a thing in Germany, I've personally never seen a German one, but a lot of underage people in the US who want to still buy alcohol or go to the bars get one, usually on the internet. They often look like an ID. No, they don't. No. <laughs> myth, myth from another state to make sure that the bouncers in your state Yo, okay, yeah, we're getting... <laughs> ...too familiar with them and also <laughs> easier to copy from some <clears throat> states. They have the person's actual picture, but Bro. a different name and different information on it. And even though it's a crime to use those, I personally don't know of anyone who has gotten in legal trouble for it. They're just really common, and in most cases, the worst thing to happen is for the bouncer or bartender to realize that your ID is fake and take it from you. That's my experience, at least. Let me know in the comments if it's different where you live or if you know someone who has gotten in legal trouble for it. Some places also knowingly let in minors with a fake ID. In Germany, those IDs really oh, aren't yeah. a thing and I feel like it would be prosecuted more strictly. If anything, people use their friends or older siblings IDs, but since our drinking age is lower, teenagers don't really need to do that a lot. Yeah, oh. Oh my god, bro. Uh, like, it's so long. Like, I have to wait till I'm 16. Let me go buy a fake ID. Like, you guys are so lucky with this. You, you don't even... Please, enjoy. Just enjoy. That's all I gotta say. It's ridiculous. This whole country just makes me want to leave all the time. Not forget the drinking stuff. There's a million other reasons why this place... It's just like, like so backwards. Right after the drinking age, the second biggest difference is where you're allowed to drink alcohol. In Germany, you're generally allowed to drink alcohol in public, while in the US, that's usually illegal, with a few exceptions like, for example, New Orleans, Indianapolis, or Las Vegas, and sometimes there are exceptions for events and things like that. But this law is why in movies and in real life too, you'll paper sometimes bag. see people drink out of those brown paper bags in public. They're trying to hide their alcohol, which doesn't make it legal, but you still see people do that. 
In Germany, however, you are allowed to drink openly when you're out in public and we do that quite a lot too, especially in the summer. A lot of Germans just hang out outside somewhere like in the park or on a nice square in the city or by the river or lake, sometimes while grilling out and we drink. But the water is always nice because you can put your drinks in the shallow water for them to stay cool. Another thing that is really common is drinking while you're walking somewhere. This has different names, but I usually call it a Wegbier, a way beer. And that's just so nice sometimes, whether it's walking through the park or the city with your friends on a warm summer night with a beer in your hand. And a lot of people also do it for pre-gaming. So before going out, people often pre-game in both countries. Oh, but yeah. in Germany, you can pre-game and then take your drinks with you and finish them on the way to the location. I actually sometimes did that here in the US in the beginning, just out of habit and then like, Halfway there, I was like, oh, oh, I just carried my open beer with me on the street. One thing that isn't always allowed, though, is drinking. I got to say, like, we'll talk about it in the end. But like the enforcement of these laws in the United States, like, yes, we do have very strict laws surrounding alcohol. But if you go to the right places, like it is literally like the laws don't even exist and you're in a different world. Which is so stupid because it's like, why can't we just be honest and upfront about it? Rather, they have to create these underground illegal economies, which, and they know about it. I mean, don't even get me started on this, guys. We're, the video is going to be an hour long. Public transportation. <laughs> That's different from city to city, but some don't allow it, which doesn't mean that people don't still do it anyway. Another advantage of the whole drinking in public thing is that it's less complicated for restaurants to have an outdoor area in the summer. In a lot of European cities, sidewalk dining and sidewalk cafes are very common and they're an important part of the cityscape. In the US, however, restaurants have to make sure that if they have an outdoor area, it's compliant with the alcohol laws. And in Ohio, for example, restaurants need to have a physical border around their outdoor yeah. area in order to be able to serve alcohol there. Let me know if that's different in your state, but in Ohio, the restaurants and bars have fences around their outdoor areas, or of course they can have like a rooftop or a courtyard. Then there are also laws that regulate when and where alcohol can be sold in the US in stores. And there are actually some regions in the US where you can't get any alcohol at all, so-called dry counties. Here on the map, they're marked in red. But even outside of those, in a lot of states, you can't get any alcohol at a normal grocery store. Either the store will yeah. have a separated liquor section attached to it, or you need to go to a liquor store. In some states, you can at least get beer and wine at the grocery store though. Then there are also time limits. In Ohio, for example, you can't buy any alcohol at the store between 1 a.m. and 5.30 a.m. and at the bar from 2.30 to 6 a.m. And in a lot of states, you can't buy alcohol at all at the store on Sundays. In Germany, you can buy yeah. alcohol basically anywhere and any time as long as the stores are open, because that's really the bigger question in Germany, because normal stores usually close between 8 p.m. and 11 p.m., depending on where you are in Germany, and you can get all kinds of alcohol at any store, supermarkets, beverage stores, gas stations, or even kiosks. When it comes to driving laws in regards to alcohol, I've mentioned this in my video on driving differences, if you haven't seen that yet, the limit for blood alcohol while driving is higher in the US actually. We measure it differently, it's per cent in the US and per mil in Germany, but in per mil the limit is 0.8 in the US and 0.5 in Germany. Of course this is stricter when you're still in a probation period or something like that and obviously you should never drink when you intend to drive. But in the US they even take it one step further. Even when you're completely sober, you're not allowed to have an opened alcohol container in your car in most states. So you can't have a whiskey bottle in your car that has been opened before, or if your passenger driver wants to bring the rest of an already opened bottle of wine with them, it's illegal to have that in the car, unless it's in the trunk. In a few states though, it is allowed for the passengers to have open alcohol containers. In Germany, there is no problem with that at all. Your passengers what? are even allowed to drink while they're in your car 
and technically even you as a driver are legally allowed to drink while driving as long as you stay under the 0.5 per mil limit which is obviously really irresponsible and nobody should ever do that but it's crazy to mention because it seems like really loose rules compared to the ones in the u.s number wise however which is ironic because <laughs> throughout these videos we've like i've just mentioned how like strict Germany is when it comes to laws and rules. Alcohol, listen, you can't play the piano certain hours of the day, but you can drink and drive a car. Okay, Germany. Okay. As long as you're under 0.5. I mean, I, yeah, I know, but like, that's still just crazy. Come on. Like, that's still insane. Like, you could really be going crazy on the Autobahn, left lane, flying by people, taking a sip of beer. That's fine. As long as you're under 0.5. I mean, it makes sense. It's just so insane. However, despite the loose rules in Germany, there are more DUIs in the US than in Germany, oh, yeah. so more drunk driving violations. Now, to be, to be fair though, like, well, there's no being fair with drunk driving. Like, I'm not justifying it, but I'm more so explaining why it is the way it is. Things are a lot more spread out in the United States. A lot more people drive. We don't have the amazing public transportation system that you guys have. So especially people who live in rural areas, like if they want to go to a bar or drink somewhere at a friend's house, you know, setting up that uh, like dr uh, driver to drive them home, like a sober ride is not always possible. And sometimes it's either go and drink or don't go at all. And what do you think Americans are going to pick? Come on. So it's it's really just unfortunate that that's the way it is. We just don't have good public transport. So people have to drive everywhere, which leads to more DUIs. And the DUI stats in the United States are insane. So many people, so many people have been, I, I gotta, I'm gonna pull that up for y'all, but. Oh, let's talk about how alcohol is looked at in the two countries, which is tricky because culture is always something that's hard to grasp and that's going to vary from place to place and from person to person. But broadly speaking, I'd say that in the US, alcohol is more perceived as a taboo topic with people under 21 not even being able to enter a bar and all those legal restrictions. In Germany, I would say that it's more considered a normal part of everyday life and part of our culture, like in a lot of European countries and good beer, good wine and other alcohol is something that we drink because we enjoy it in a lot of cases. So having a glass of wine or beer with your dinner is pretty normal for some people even during the week, for others only for special dinners. Another pretty common thing is having a Feierabend beer, which is the beer that you drink after work. So it's what you've earned after working hard. Even having a beer with your lunch isn't really a taboo in Germany. The Bavarian traditional dish Weißwurstfrühstück, white sausage bread, breakfast is traditionally eaten before noon and it comes with a glass of Hefeweizen. Also at a lot of places I've worked at before, which was mostly in the media field, so it may not be like that in all fields, they had some beer right next to the soda in the storage or at one place we even had beer in the vending machine. And when there was something to celebrate, we also often had champagne during the day and then kept working. That being said though, Drinking during the day is definitely not a daily thing for most Germans. And there's also a saying, kein Bier vor vier, no beer before four. Because I feel like it almost sounds like we're all alcoholics in Germany, <laughs> which we're definitely yeah. not. Obviously, people in the US do enjoy their drinks as well. But just in comparison, there is a tendency towards a more excessive consumption than in Germany. Like a lot of people don't drink because they like the beer or wine. They drink in order to get drunk. People yeah. do that in Germany too, of course, but the binge drinking culture really isn't as big there as it is here in the US or in the UK, for example. Maybe that's one reason why hard seltzers like White Claw have become really popular in the US while they're not a thing in Germany because a lot of people in the States like the feeling of being tipsy but don't want to taste the alcohol necessarily. Yeah. Just a thought though, I didn't conduct any studies on this, but overall I would say that in Germany, alcohol is more something that you actually enjoy Joy and a cultural artifact, while in the US it's often more considered something forbidden, like a drug. Which it is, of course, but that's just not as prevalent in our perception of alcohol in Germany. I would I would agree with, with that. I, I, I think it's very overarching to say a group of over 300 million people 
you know, you can't, you never can categorize Americans. There's so many different types of Americans, but it is true. There is certainly a population that, you know, engages in binge drinking and we do have a big alcoholic alcoholism problem. So it's not to say that, but I think a lot of it too, with the reason why Americans don't necessarily enjoy the taste of beer as much as Germans, you know, obviously that's a very, it's a general statement, but I think it's also, you look at the drinking age. I mean, people aren't having their first drink at, you know, 13, 14, like that's not common. You know, maybe you'll have a sip if your parents are cool or whatever the case may be, but you're not like actually engaging in drinking. Like it's like a, a sip and you spit it out. You're like, oh, that's disgusting. And then, you know, maybe a lot of times it's a uh, late in high school or early in university. And by that time, you're around the age of 18. I'd say 18 is the average time to start drinking. So if you're just being introduced to beer at 18, obviously it's not going to taste good. And I feel like, you know, that's, it's like a, it's like an arc with alcohol. Like you, you enjoy it as you grow older with it. And I feel like that initial introduction being very poor for the majority of first time drinkers in the United States, considering that we are so much older and we just haven't been introduced to it before that. And that's true. I mean, that's, that's really is what my experience from what I've seen. A lot of kids don't have their first drink until they're around 18. Um, so yeah. And we do have the law too, where if you're at your house with your parents, you can drink under the age of 21, but it is 21 to drink anywhere to buy a drink anywhere to go like literally in any bar or club like that's that's just what it is so i i definitely agree with what uh feely feely said fact is or germany Faley. definitely has a much higher Faley's alcohol Faley. consumption than the u.s with the average german drinking about 10.6 liters of pure alcohol per year while it's nine liters per person in the u.s and when it comes to beer in particular germans consumed a total of 8,321 million liters in total in 2018. Per capita, only the Czechs and the Austrians drink more beer than us. Wow. We drink over 100 liters of beer per person per year. And with Damn. that, let's go into the beer culture. That's, that's a lot. Obviously, beer isn't the only <laughs> alcohol that we wow. produce in Germany, but it's definitely the most popular drink and every region is known for their own kinds. Like Bavarians like to drink Lager and Hefeweizen. In most parts of Germany, people drink Pilsners and in the Cologne area, they drink Kölsch, named after the city and served in tiny 0.2 liter glasses in a so-called wreath. And of course, there are a lot of festivals all over Germany where people mainly drink beer, with Oktoberfest in Munich, Die Wiesen, how us locals call it, being the biggest and most popular one within Germany, but they're celebrated all throughout the summer in different places, a lot in the south of Germany, but also in the north, even though they don't have that beer tent culture just as much. And we also have wine festivals, by the way. Another thing related to beer are our beer gardens, which again, we have more of those in the south, beer. but you'll absolutely find them in the north of Germany too. Sometimes beer gardens are just the outdoor area of a restaurant, but the classical beer garden is just a big outdoor area with gravel Ooh. and these typical beer benches and self-service for drinks, which they always have the beer on tap. And if you want a Radler, which is half beer, half lemon soda, they'll mix it right in front of you. You can also get non-alcoholic drinks, of course, and in a lot of cases, they also have a food self-service, but you're also usually allowed to bring your own food there. So in the summer, a lot of people celebrate birthdays there and bring their own cakes and everything, or people just get together for a potluck or a picnic, and all they get at the location is the drinks. Definitely something that I miss in the States in the summer. It's definitely giving me some reaction ideas. Oktoberfest, beer gardens, for sure. And yes, there are German style beer gardens in the US, but I personally haven't been to one that's actually like that with that atmosphere. Related to this, one thing that is much stronger and different in the US is the bar culture. Germany doesn't have that much of a bar culture like you can find it here in the US. They have that in the UK, but in Germany we have more places that are just restaurants where you also drink or bars with table service, but less of those bars where you go in, play pool or darts, get your drink at the counter and have a jukebox and stuff like that. When it comes to restaurants, you'll notice that in Germany, a lot of the restaurants 
restaurants only serve one brand of lager, one brand of Pilsner, etc. Because they have a sponsorship agreement with a brewery oh. for financial support. So often they also have the logo of the brewery on their sign. And my last point about beer that is pretty special in Germany is that we have the so-called Reinheitsgebot, the purity law regarding beer brewing in Germany. This has been around since the year 1516, so over 500 years. And basically what it means is that there are regulations in place that say that you're only allowed to include malted grains, hops, water and yeast when making a beer which is wow. one of the reasons that the craft beer scene hasn't taken off in germany as it has in the us and other countries because those breweries struggle with the regulations and the permission to sell their beer under the name beer but this mostly applies to bottom fermented beers on the german market breweries are allowed to make different kind of beers for export purposes and breweries from abroad are allowed to import their beers even if they don't comply with the purity law. I gotta say, this is just such an extensive video. Like, shout out to Faley. Like, this is a really good video. And finally, here are 15 fun facts and differences regarding the actual act of drinking in Germany and the US. The first one is that German beer has more alcohol than American beer most of the time. Bud Light, which is a popular beer in the US, Germans often call it water, I hear, <laughs> only has 4.2% <coughs> of alcohol. Everyone calls while it in water. Germany, beer usually has 5% or more. And especially when you go to Oktoberfest, please notice that the festival beer usually has around 6%. Number two, in Germany, we usually drink beer out of bottles and not so much out of cans. We do have canned beer, but most people only drink that when they're at a music festival or something like that, where bottles aren't allowed. But canned beer isn't nearly as popular as it is in the US. Here, I would say that it's almost like 50-50. 50% 50 bottles, 50% cans. Wow. Since Americans drink out of cans a lot, they use these things a lot too. I had never seen this Cozy. before I came to the US and I still don't use them, but they're called koozies and you use them to hold your can because they're usually so cold that it hurts your hand. So you just go like this and hold it. Number four is that besides the regular 0.3 liter bottles, 10 ounce, you can also get a lot of the beers, especially in the South, in half liter bottles, 16 ounce. And when you order beer somewhere, you can also get it in a mass, which is what we call a liter of beer in Bavaria, so 34 ounces. The general name for those things, no matter which size, is Bierkrug and not Stein like you guys call it in English. Stein actually means rock or stone in German. While a six pack of bottles or cans is a very popular size to buy beer here, in Germany you can get beer just like pretty much all beverages in cases that hold 20 half liter bottles. We call them Kasten. In the US you can get packs of 24 beers as well, but usually you just get it in a carton. Number six, as I've mentioned in other videos before, we have a divided wow. in a car. That's a coincidence. Pardon. Number six, as I've mentioned in other videos before, <laughs> we have a deposit system in place in Germany where for beer bottles, you get eight cents back per bottle when you return them. And you also get a deposit on your case if you bought one. Number seven, beer is actually not cheaper than non-alcoholic drinks in German restaurants. I found that that's a common cliche and I believe that it was like that at some point, but this has become illegal and now there always has to be at least one non-alcoholic drink on the menu that's cheaper than the alcoholic one. Number eight is something that all of my German viewers probably find super fake and it's that some beer brands here use twist off bottles so that you don't need a bottle opener. That doesn't really exist in Germany, but Germans don't usually need a bottle opener either. Most Germans are really talented at opening their beer bottles with lighters, another bottle, a rolled up newspaper, or the edge of a table. But I honestly find this whole twist of thing pretty handy, but maybe that's also because I'm one of the very few Germans that can't do all those tricks. <laughs> I've been taught how to do it a million times. I've tried a million times. It's just not something that I'm good at. So. I usually just carry a bottle opener with my keychain. Number nine, 
Germans have adapted a lot of the typical American drinking games like beer pong, flip cup and those kind of things. But one game that seems to be a German invention that Americans usually don't know about is flunky ball, also called beer ball sometimes. I've taught that to a few American friends and they all loved it. Number 10 is that a lot of Germans know how to properly pour different kinds of beers and it's a little looked down upon when you don't know how to do that and oh. do it wrong or pour it in the wrong glass, especially with wheat beer. Don't ever drink wheat beer out of the bottle in Bavaria, you're gonna break all the beer lovers hearts. It's supposed to be drunk in a glass like this. Also in Germany we pour our beer so that it has at least one inch of foam on purpose, while in the US that's often considered like a waste of space and you often get your beer poured up until the top of the glass with zero foam. This one I've mentioned in my video on German cliches. Germans drink their beer usually at a temperature of 5 to 10 degrees Celsius, which is 41 to 50 Fahrenheit, while in the US it's common to drink it ice cold which a lot of Germans say baby. that this is because American beer isn't as good and the cooler it is, the less flavor it has. But as a result, some Americans seem to think that we drink our beer warm because we don't <laughs> drink it ice cold. And I can tell you, we usually do put it in the fridge. Our fridges just aren't as cold as American ones. Number 13 is a minor difference that I've noticed when drinking tequila shots. In Germany, I'm familiar with the tradition of drinking it with salt and a lemon, while in the US it's usually a lime. Also, when you drink with other people, it's very common in Germany to wait until everyone has their drink and then say cheers and then start drinking, which the most common way to say that is Prost in German. I'll put a few other options of saying cheers over here. But a lot of Americans just seem to start drinking right when they get their drink. <laughs> And the last little fun fact is that, at least in Bavaria, and I'm pretty sure this is a thing in other parts of Germany too, is that you're not supposed to drink the last few zips of your drink, especially with beer. That's considered the Spuckschluck, backwash, or in Bavarian dialect, the Norgal. So in a restaurant or at a beer festival, you'll see that a lot of the empty glasses will have some beer left in there, while here in the US, I don't really see people do that a lot. Come on, man. So that was my little in I don't agree with that. You got to get every last drop inside into the German alcohol <laughs> culture compared to the US. Obviously, there is a lot more to touch upon. I really talked mostly about beer because that's like the obvious topic to talk about regarding Germany and also, I like beer, but Germany also makes amazing wine and herbal liquor like Jägermeister, which is sold all over the world. And everything you buy that ends in the word schnapps, like peppermint schnapps, that's German too. Schnapps just means hard liquor in German. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and are getting through this time somehow. I'm sure a lot of you are. I'm sure this was during the p pandemic, but um, no, that was a really, really good video. I feel like I learned a lot about the alcohol culture in Germany and I wish I could say that this video didn't leave me feeling incredibly envious of you guys and your your drinking laws. So I'm going to tough it out. Got a few more months until I'm 21 and then uh, I'll be completely legal in the US. Took long enough, bro. Let me tell you that. Like it's I don't think there's a single I don't. I haven't met a single person who agrees with the drinking laws in the United States. I don't understand why they couldn't have just done every like eighteen. Like you can make it. You know, like you can have the same law federally for all the states. It doesn't. It doesn't. You can change the age, guys. That's my goal is to get into Congress and make some real changes. Anyways, that was it. Was a really great video and um, definitely learned a lot. So. Thank you guys for watching. If you have other ones you'd like for me to check out about Germany, throw them in the comments down below. Hit the like button, hit subscribe, and I will catch you all in the next one.